What's up? Today, I'm going to give you some advanced record box tips. So like I said, this is more of an advanced guide. So if you have already learned some of these basics and you know how your way around record box, these are just some little things that you can do to tweak, enhance, kind of like add more of an aesthetic to what you're looking for and what your preferences are as a DJ. And I actually have a video on how to export your first USB in record box. We'll put it somewhere over here. I don't know. But definitely go check that video out so then you understand how to make your first USB, put it together. Then you can go on to this video and then start doing some little intricacies here and there to then tie everything up in a bow. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is changing the color of your cue points. So if you've used Serato before, you know that every different cue point, they give you a color and it's pretty easy to change the color. It's also easy to change the color in record box as well, but a lot of times people just use the same color because every time you tap it in, you get the same color. Unlike in Serato, you get different colors, but you can actually change the color. You do this just by simply right clicking and then you have 16 different options to choose from. So you could do purple, you could do a nice hot red, pinkish, yellowy kind of thing, green, blue, all those different colors are options that you can use if you're someone that operates well uh, with colored cues and those sort of symbolize different things. I know DJs who only have acapellas as green or they only have their intro sections as red. So you can go through and you can actually color code these in advance. So if you export a USB and you put it in there, if the player has that feature, you'll get the different colored cue points, which is really nice. The next thing is adjusting the audio waves to your preference. For me, I hate, well, I don't hate is a strong word. I do not like the blue waveform option that they have on here. So for me, I go into my settings right away if I'm in a new instance of Rekordbox and I actually go to, I think it's in view. Yeah. So in view, you can do blue, RGB, or three band. Three band is pretty similar to what you would see in like Tractor. Uh, for me, I prefer RGB. Um, that's what I started on, so that's what I use. So I recommend switching over to what your preference is. I, don't like the blue one it doesn't give you many options because <laughs> it's just one color the whole time so i prefer the rgb mode and i would just say switch to whichever you prefer but if you're looking for a new one definitely try rgb out it's the best one in my opinion next thing i want to talk about is adding your own vinyl break or tape stop effect in record box so in record box once you connect to a mixer like my mixer that i have behind me here actually has the start and stop effects on there already so i don't have to go on my software and change it but if you're connecting to a mixer with record box that doesn't have those features in your settings under preferences and controller you should get something like this so what this is is this is just the standard knob that you would have for your like pause time and how long it would take so the further you increase that knob it's going to give you that longer slowdown effect so if you bring it up to nowhere past like 12 o'clock, usually you get a pretty quick tape stop effect, which is actually really nice instead of just getting your standard pause effect, which just cuts the audio immediately, which can kind of be a little weird at times. I like to have that option of that pause effect because you can use the faders to give yourself an instant cut. So why not use the play and pause feature to have that cool little tape stop effect in that regard? My next step in record box is to actually adjust the information in record box. So sometimes the analysis isn't as consistent as I would like it to be. Like there is this weird point where tracks that were 140 would be read at 93 beats per minute, which was so annoying for me. And if you've used Serato or Tractor in the past, if you just double click on something, you can edit it with ease. Like it's right there. And for the longest time, I would double click on something like this and be like, yo, why am I not able to edit these things? Like this is so freaking annoying. I'm sitting there double clicking on everything. I'm getting frustrated. But if you want to edit the information, all you have to do is single click. Don't double click immediately. And then go to the section you want to edit and then left click once. Give it a second. And then you have the ability to edit it how you want to. So don't just double click because that will auto load the track. So just single click, highlight the section or the track itself, then single click on the section you would like to edit. Then that gives you the typing feature so that you can edit 
it to say what you want or if the BPM's a little off and you know the BPM, you can type it in that way. And the last tip I have, which is actually kind of more like PC based, if you're like a PC person, if you've played video games before, you're definitely gonna understand what I'm saying. And that is to change your binds to your preference. So one thing that I love about Rekordbox is that they don't have a set amount of binds. Like you don't have these preset binds that you can't change. I mean, they have the default binds, but you can actually go in Rekordbox and change your binds how you want to. So if you're using a computer, and you're actually like laptop DJing with Rekordbox, you can go to the keyboard section and you can pull up all of these tabs here, player A, B, general, all of that. You can change your binds. You can literally just change them for every single thing you want. You can take them out, add them in. So you don't have to put like a standard laptop cover keyboard screen on there, whatever it's called, <laughs> and just stick to the default shift load, whatever they have for the feature that's designed on the actual software. In Rekordbox, you can go through and you can change all of that. So I recommend definitely changing it if you have a preference, like maybe if you're more left-handed than right-handed and you have your laptop on a certain side and you hate a certain bind that's kind of been a standard in DJing for a while, you can just adjust it to your own preference in Rekordbox, which is so nice. All right, everyone that does it for me today. Hopefully you learned something new. If you did, make sure to like, subscribe, all of that good stuff. Let me know if you're learning some stuff about record box in here. The first one was covering some very basic things. The next one was kind of highlighting some of the very unique features of record box that I think are really nice, as well as some odd intricacies about it when it comes to editing audio, for example. There's just different parts of record box that the more I end up using it, the more I realize I know very very little about the software itself and let me know if there's anything that you think other djs should know about in the comments below there's probably some things that i don't even know about i don't really touch streaming stuff that much when it comes to music so if you guys know some cool stuff in regards to record box streaming definitely let me know in the comments down below i would love to check that out that's something i haven't gotten into but definitely should get into and i'm hoping to get a tractor dj on here soon i gotta find a really good one so if you guys know a good tractor dj let me know. I can reach out to them and then maybe we can try to do a collaboration video and we can get some more information on Tractor products here in the future. But until the next video, take it easy and I'll talk to you soon.